When you think of Navy, I'm sure you think of ships and submarines and perhaps, in my case, aircraft carriers. I wanted to start by talking about a branch of my service that is perhaps lesser known. We have in the Navy U.S. divers, and they're a highly specialized community. They're capable of conducting underwater construction and demolition, underwater search and rescue, as well as routine ship restorations and repairs. And they also provide technical expertise to special ops and amphibious missions when required. And obviously, a group of people like this go through rigorous training. There's one individual I'd like to highlight. Uh, and among my service, a senior enlisted is referred to as a chief. So Navy Diver Chief Jones graduated first in a dive class of 25 people. And Chief Jones can swim 500 meters in under 12 minutes, perform 50 push-ups, 50 sit-ups, which is double our minimum, and can run one and a half miles in under 12 minutes. And then all of this is done in a span of 45 minutes. And Navy Diver Chief Jones is one of our best, brightest, capable, and cool-headed. But Navy Diver Chief Rebecca Jones is one of the Navy's few women divers. And when I put it in context, the Department of Defense put the Navy's active duty enlisted ranks at just over, all of our sailors, at just over 323,000. And across officers and enlisted, women in my service make up about 18% of the Navy. Navy Community Chief Jones and other women like her make up about 1% of the dive community, which was a pretty select number. But how did we get here? Well, about two decades ago, in 1993, the combat exclusion policy was lifted in my country, allowing women in aviation and women in the Navy to be able to serve in combat. And then 20 years later, the Secretary of Defense, Leon Panetta, announced the full cancellation of the combat exclusion law. And as the Navy has opened more positions to women since the repeal of this policy, we still continue to have first. Our first women were placed on submarines four years ago. And with the latest policy announcement, I expect someday we might see the first woman Navy SEAL, so G.I. Jane won't be just a movie. The military isn't alone as an occupation where women are less than 50% of the workforce. And in my country, according to the Bureau of Label and Statistics, women make up only 5.9% of fire fire, firefighters, 2.7% of construction workers, and only 8.3% of mechanical engineers. And so what we are often faced with, what's the right number? 1%, 18%, 2.7%, and that question generally is asked for all jobs. U.S. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg may have an answer. She's often asked, when will there be enough women on the U.S. Supreme Court? And she has famously answered, nine. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Supreme Court in the United States, there are only nine positions. So people are sometimes shocked by that answer. But I love her reasoning when she follows up with a statement, there's been nine men, and nobody's ever raised a question about that. So there is another example where 100% might be the right answer. Just as there are nine US Supreme Court justices, it's been nine years since the first rotation of an all-female force protection unit, which was sent by India to aid the United Nations mission in Liberia. And one of the India FPU commanders, Colonel Bala, said, when the local women see the female peacekeepers, they get inspired by them. I believe this is true. I also believe it's vitally important for people to have mentors and role models that they can relate to, that they have someone that they see made the way, and they know they have a path they can follow. Now, when you look at the female peacekeepers in India, it's hard to quantify their contributions, but in terms of women, prior to their rotation, women made up about 6% of the security forces. Nine years later, it's 17%. And I don't think that can just be a coincidence. So I've talked about these numbers, 1% and 100%. But I want to leave you with one notion. 
you can't place a specific number on statistic on what is the right number of women in a career. The truly important thing is that all of us, regardless of our race, our gender, our religious views, have the opportunity to be successful. When that happens, the best performers rise to the top. And when that happens, we have the best and most capable team. So meritocracy, when that happens, what a new world order that will be. Thank you.